Welcome to Electro Online. When we talk about space, we talk about the emptiness between the stars and the planets and the galaxies, where we assume there's absolutely nothing. And of course, we tend to think that space is just an empty region with nothing in it, and we never think about space being something. But space is something. There's something about space that has all kinds of properties, and there's all kinds of limits how space controls how fast the speed of light is, how space controls how fast we can move through space, and so forth. So we're trying to understand space a little bit better, and so let's take a look at the speed of light in space. Why is the speed of light limited? Why can't it go faster? Why can't it go slower? Well, there's something about the properties of space that are specific to what we call the electric field and the magnetic field. Now, an electric field is something that exists around any charge. Any object that has charge will create an electric field around it. Any charge that moves will create a magnetic field around it. And as we go into space, there are charges in space. There's atoms floating around, they have charges on them. And so, around a charged object, you will have an electric field. That electric field strength is controlled by space and it controls it by something we call the permittivity of free space and it's a constant that we discovered and it's used in any one of our equations where we calculate the strength of the electric field. So when we have a charge in space, there's an electric field around it and the strength of that field is controlled by the property of space. Likewise, when a charge in space moves through space, it creates a magnetic field around it, and the strength of that magnetic field is also controlled by a specific constant that we discovered, and those constants are called the permittivity of free space and the permeability of free space. Now, what the amazing thing is, that if we take those two, we multiply them together, we take the square root, and we divide it into one, we get the exact value for the speed of light. The speed of light is controlled by the properties of space that control the strength of the electric field and the strength of the magnetic field. It is absolutely amazing. This was discovered by Maxwell back in about the 1850s, and it was one of those amazing discoveries where we finally saw a relationship between how fast light moves through space and the strength of the electric and magnetic fields around charges. So space isn't simply nothing. Space is something that controls both the electric field and the magnetic field, and because of that, also controls the speed of which light can travel through it. So that at least gives us a little bit better of an idea what space is. How did Maxwell come up with that equation? That's a good question. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'd have to go back. Essentially what he did was he went through and he developed what we call the Maxwell's equations where he associated the electric field and the magnetic field and charges and through the manipulation of those equations he must have gone ahead and started playing with those numbers and as far as I know he probably just came up with that by accident by just manipulating the numbers and go whoa look at that something that's close to the speed of light. Yeah, but they, they know them they did not know exactly. They began to know the speed of light approximately. And with this, they got the exact amount, but then they still wanted to experimentally verify that this was the case. And that wasn't done until later. But yeah, this was a good start, but I'm sure that not everybody believed that this was the speed of light. But they wanted to at least check experimentally, which they did. The Michelson interferometer experiment is the one that uh, they did here up in the mountains in, uh, above Los Angeles, and uh, they ended up checking that number or verifying the number to be correct. Yeah, it almost seems like, you know, <laughs> you pull it out of your... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an orifice you shouldn't be pulling it out of. Uh, yeah, it, it was amazing that he do that connection, but he had a pretty good idea by understanding. He was the one that probably understood electric fields and magnetic fields better than anyone else during that time, and he was able to make that connection and come up with Maxwell's equations, which even today are still phenomenal in their, um, in their invention.